All right, next problem. Find the distance between the point 5, 2, and the line. Same line as always. Now this one, it's pretty easy if you realize that the distance between the point and the line is just the distance between the point and the closest point on that line, right? I mean, you could say that there could be any number of distances, but when we say the distance between a point and a line, we mean the closest distance. I hope that much is uh, pretty much clear. Um, so, in that case, we already know the point of intersection, the closest point, and that is 3, 5. So we want to find the distance between 3, 5, and uh, 5, 2. Now, the, again, I've already taught you guys how to find the distance between two points that was in the vector tutorial. And we use the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So we would say that the distance between these two points, just get a good color here, is going to be, uh, well, it's basically if this is uh, A, nah, that's not a good color for that, A, B, this is C, Again, it's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So, a is going to be 2, right? The distance between 3 and 5 is 2. So, 2 squared, this is 3. 3 squared is equal to c squared. So, c is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to, uh, this is 4 plus 9 is 13, so it's going to be root 13. C is equal to root 13. If you figure, if you calculate that out, it's going to be between 3 and 4, basically. So, there you go. Uh, not too hard. Now, to do this, to, in order to do this, you would have to first calculate, you have to first find this point and go through all that rigmarole of finding the point of intersection. And there is a formula that condenses that down into a single step. So that formula is this, distance is equal to the absolute value of AM BN plus C over A squared plus B squared. Uh, so MN are the point of interest and AX plus BY plus C is the, uh, the equation of the line. Now I may be saying, Chili, this doesn't look like the equation of a line, but that's uh, that's not a big deal. You can take a uh, point or slope y-intercept form and work it into this form easily. So ax plus by plus c. All you got to do is well, let's say our equation, let's say our equation of line is in the form y is equal to mx plus b. To get it into that form, I do is subtract this stuff from the right side and the left side, and so you would get negative mx plus y minus b is equal to zero. And then your a would be uh, negative m, your b would always be one, and your c would be negative b. So that's one way of you know reworking it. Uh, and then you could plug those into that equation and it would work fine. So yeah, just a bit of shortcut here, or if you find yourself needing to uh, calculate this value and it does come up so it's good to know all right next one determine whether the circle of radius 5 at 5 2 intersects with the line all right well 5 2 again are our same old points so we want to know whether a circle of radius 5 centered here is going to intersect well i mean that circle is going to go from here to here one two three four five so i mean it's definitely going to be intersecting this bad boy we can see that here but how do you actually compute that algebraically without drawing a diagram? Well, I mean, you know that um, all points, all points on the circle are going to be a distance of 5 from its center. So knowing that, if we take the distance of the center and we calculate the distance to the line, if that distance is less than 5, then we know that it must intersect with the circle. But if that distance is greater than 5, then we know that that line cannot intersect. So to find whether a circle intersects with a line, all you've got to do 
is do the shortest distance from the center to the line and then compare that to the radius. And since the distance here is going to be root 13, which is less than 4, we know that this, this bad boy is going to be intersecting. All right, next one. Determine whether the circle of radius 5, 5, 2 intersects with the line segment 6, 7 to 12, 11. Now, I'm going to save you some of the uh, suspense here. If you plug these values into this equation, you will see that they satisfy it. So these two points are on this line. So this is the line equation for this line segment. So what we really want to know is, uh, well, first off, uh, 6, 7, 12, 11. Let's, uh, let's look at the points. 6, 7. And let's look at the point 12, 11. And we'll zoom out here. Wait. Well, I guess it wants me to put those around there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. So we do see, indeed, that they do fall on here. Right. Uh, now the question is, are they inside? Is this line segment crossing the circle of radius 5? That's the question. And it uh, looks pretty gosh darned close. So how would you compute this algebraically? Because we could compute it non-algebraically pretty simply. Um, so if I am just put the uh, equation of the circle in here, and you'll notice that the equation of the circle is actually very similar to the uh, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals uh, c squared, because it's same idea, right? Pythagorean theorem is distance between two points, and the circle is saying all points that are the same distance to some other point. So they're related. But anyways, so if we look at this, we can also see, eh, let me see here, yeah, we can see the points of intersection with this line and the circle, and we see that the line segment is actually just outside of the circle by graphing it. But the question is, how do we determine this you know, like uh, algebraically or algorithmically. And the answer to that is, well, the first step when you're determining whether a uh, circle crosses a line segment is you would take the uh, distance between the circle, the center of the circle and the line. Because if it doesn't cross the line, it's not going to cross the line segment. So we would take the distance, we would find, yeah, it is crossing the line. So now we have three cases. Uh, we can look at the x values of the points, or the y values, doesn't matter which one. But let's look at the x values. Are both the points on one side of the center of the circle? So these guys, they're both on the right side. If they were both on the right side, or both on the left side, all you need to do is calculate the distance between this one uh, the center of the circle and the closest point. And if that distance is greater than the radius, then you know that both of these guys, because this one's even further, you know that both of these guys are outside of the circle. But if that distance was less than the radius, then you would know that, ah, so this uh, line segment crosses the circle. And it's the same if the both of them are on this side here. You would just take the distance to the closest one, the one that has the closest x basically. Um, but what if uh, the line segment was something like, I don't know, what, what is a good point here? I guess this would be negative, negative 3, 1. So let's go negative 3, 1. Yeah. So what if you had one line segment here and one line segment here? Well, you know that the circle intersects the line and if the points of the line segment are straddling the circle, that means that the circle must be in between here, and for that reason, the circle must intersect. So, you can do it by basically a little bit of logic and a little bit of math. You find the distance from the circle to the line, and that's your first rejection. If, the, if it's crossing the line, then you check your points. Are they both on one side or on the other side, or are they straddling? If they're straddling, it's automatically 
and intersection. If they're both on one side or the other, you check the closest one. And that's how you do it, basically. And you might be saying, Chile, I don't really get how this geometric stuff is going to be useful. And uh, it's actually like when you're, when you're going to deal with graphics, uh, and especially if you're going to be doing things like trying to create your own custom uh, physics or try to customize an existing physics engine, this, the ability to do this kind of reasoning becomes very important indeed. So it's not bad to, uh, to expose yourself to some of this stuff. All right, next one. Find the points of intersection between the circle and the line. So in the previous question, I basically avoided, where is it? I avoided us having to calculate the actual points of intersection by using a little bit of logic and deductive reasoning. But uh, sometimes you're going to actually want to know where those things uh, intersect with each other. And the idea is basically the same as the idea for calculating the intersection between two lines. You've got a uh, system of two equations and you basically substitute one into the other. So to do this you need to know what the equation of a circle is. And you might not have been able to figure that out on your own. So you might have had to look that up and that's okay really. Um, but as you've seen, as I've just demonstrated on that, uh, on that website there, equation of the circle is going to be x minus 5, you minus the, uh, the center x, and you subtract the center y, square those, and the radius squared, which is 5 squared. So that's the equation of the circle. And the equation of the line is, like we've seen, y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 3, which is also 6 over 9. So we've got these two equations here. What you can do is simply, we've already got y isolated here, so we can take, we can now substitute this y, which is this uh, expression here, into the y here. We just do that substitution. And we get uh, x minus 5 squared plus, here we go, that's not 3 over 2, it's 2 over 3, x plus 3, minus 2, squared, is equal to, and that's just 25. So now we have to basically expand this. And expansion is done um, by a distribution. So x minus, let me just show you what it looks like for x minus 5. We do this stuff usually in junior high where I'm from. Uh, so x minus 5 squared is x minus 5 times x minus 5. And you multiply each of the terms by the other terms. So you would, this is equal to x times x, which is x squared, plus x times negative 5, plus x times, so x plus x, x times x, plus x times negative 5, plus, again, x times negative 5, plus negative 5 times negative 5. So this is going to be negative 10x, and negative 5 to negative 5 is plus 25. So this thing here expands to this, and this one is going to expand to something else. So you clean this up, 3 minus 2 is 1, you get this, you square this, and uh, you get you expand it, and you get this. 4 over 9x squared plus 4 over 3x plus 1. So, now we want to add this to this, and collect all the terms. And when we do that, we are going to get, well let's see here, this is 4 over 9 plus 1, which is going to be 13 is that right? 9 plus 1. Yeah, that's 13 over 9 x squared plus negative 10 plus 4 over 3. It's going to be negative 26 over 3. Um, I'm probably going to fuck something up here. And then we've got uh, plus 25 plus 1. So add those together and that is plus 26 is equal to 25. Now we subtract 25 from both sides. Now we have things in the, uh, the standard form. Uh, x squared, x1. So we call this A, we call this B, we call this C. Very similar to uh, the form that we had to put the straight line in for the, uh, the what is it, the closest uh, point on the line. Uh, so, 
What do we do with this? Well, there's a formula that will allow us to calculate the values of x given an equation of this form. So we, get, we call this, these the roots of x. So that equation, a very famous equation, so we call it the quadratic formula. And it, it gives us negative b plus or minus, plus and minus, uh, square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, why plus and minus? Well, if you notice geometrically, if you look at the graph here, there's actually two points of intersection here. So that means that there must be two different solutions, two different values of x that satisfy this to give two solutions to give two points of intersection. So this equation gives us two different x's right here. I'm you just work, you work the formula, or you work your equation into this form, and then you can apply this formula to get the values of x. All right, what about this guy? 1.44444. Yeah, uh, 8.66667. C is equal to 1. This is supposed to be negative. And calculate. Answer, x is equal to 5.8 and x is equal to 0 0.1. So 5.9, 0 0.1. Let's take a look at our bloody diagram here. 5.9, that looks pretty much right. It's just about six, not quite. And 0 0.1, that looks also very correct right here. Yeah, 5.882 and 0 0.118, which is basically what we've got here. So, looks like our math was correct, and but when I say our math, I mean the math that I plugged into the solver, but it's all the same shit in the end, isn't it? Uh, and to get the y, all you would need to do then, I'm not gonna do it on screen, but you would just take the x's that you got from solving this equation, and you would plug them into your original line, and then you could solve for y, very simply. And there you go, finding the points of intersection. Not super hard.